a killer nun, a child possessed by a demon of old, and a baby born of the devil himself. Three distinct threats with one thing in common. They rely on your sense of belief, or lack thereof, to make your blood run cold and frighten you to the core. Today on Gamma Ray, we're going to dig into horror's long-standing fixation on faith as a tool of fear, and pray we survive to tell the tale. It should come as no surprise that the biblical definition of good and evil has had a strong influence on the horror genre over the centuries. The tenets of Judeo-Christian religion have long influenced Western art across many mediums, and that certainly has not been confined to any single genre. Horror has especially benefited from the groundwork laid by religious texts, if only because there's so much horror already there. The concepts of grisly punishment, eternal damnation, and earthly torment are coupled with tales of unnatural floods, sentient foliage, and kings plotting to chop babies in half. Divide the child into two parts. And of course, all of this pales in comparison to the presence of the greatest villain of all, the OG horror baddie, the devil himself. Naturally, the devil's place in religious texts already lends itself to horror. Like the structured rules of any organized religion, whether you want to admit it or not, operate on fear of punishment. And yours belongs to me. But by taking the deeply rooted cultural and spiritual fears of one's faith and placing it into tales of terror, the horror genre has been able to return to themes time and again that it knows are a surefire way to unease and unnerve. And while it seems almost like a no-brainer for the genre to prey upon that which already exists as a fear for so many, by appealing to that fear, coupled with centuries of rhetoric about the wickedness of sin, horror's dance with the devil is, in some ways, its purest and most culturally visible trope. Powerful imagery like Regan's possession in The Exorcist speaks to our fear of what happens when sin overtakes us and the unnerving helplessness that occurs when we no longer have dominion over ourselves. Other concepts, like the idea of the Antichrist being born, such as Damien Thorne in The Omen, is not only direct biblical reference, but also taps into our primal fears of what happens if humanity on a whole loses all sense of virtue. Inherently, the suggestion with both of these examples and many others spun from this trope is clear. We need to be reminded the cost of what it means to lose our humanity. If not for religious reasons, then at the very least, for ourselves. And while Western religion has certainly had more than a passing impact on how classic and contemporary horror is constructed, the genre has always had a fascination with faiths of many kinds, but often not in the kindest of ways. While the devil is automatically cast as a clear and unquestionable nemesis, is often due to the expected supposition that we're approaching his presence from the standpoint of Western religion. Crosses defeating vampires, priests exercising demons, and ancient holy artifacts defeating the fallen or wicked. All of these suppose that there's only one correct religion, which is not only presumptuous, but also speaks to how horror tends to handle faiths of different kinds. As we know, witches and Wicca are often conflated and treated in genre materials as the faith of those errant of the holy order. And a long-standing trope of horror movies was the Gypsy Curse, seen as far back as Universal's original Wolfman and as recently as Sam Raimi's Drag Me to Hell. Not exactly the kindest or most culturally aware of representations. While all faiths have inherent fears and folklore of their own, often this presentation through a Western lens speaks more to a general prejudice of cultures and ideologies outside of our own, rather than a larger message about the faith being presented. Ultimately, this often willful ignorance is rooted in one of horror's most simple and known tenets, fear of the unknown. Praise Satan. If it's outside our understanding or belief system, then there's an element of uncertainty. And where there is uncertainty, fear can be sown. And from there, a horror story is destined to be born. In some ways, the fear of the unknown is truly the overarching foundation of fright and faith, regardless of background. Whether it be the anxieties and fears of what lies beyond death, or the suspicions born out of misunderstanding the beliefs of someone different than you, horror's constant return to the well of what we believe is based on the fact that our beliefs exist beyond a tangible world that we can see. And in the unseen, there's always an element of fear to exploit. Do not go into the light! So whether your fears are earthbound, or extend to the heavens, or the depths of hell, have faith 
Somewhere in there, there's a great and horrific story to be told. For all the latest episodes, subscribe to Gamma Ray and make sure to tell us your favorite flicks of the unholy kind. I'm Suzanne Kiley, and this is Dissecting Fear. Ha, <laughs>